Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. The history of aerial warfare can hardly be narrated without referring to these brave American soldiers on the edge of helicopter doors. braving unimaginable odds to cover friendly forces while demolishing enemy targets with extreme accuracy. The door gunner was one of the most outstanding aerial battle concepts developed by America during the Vietnam War. Back then, helicopter gunships were manned by a crew of three the pilot, co-pilot, and the crew chief. Who would serve as the man on the gun supporting ground troops. The role became more aggressive as the war intensified, calling for an additional gun to cover the second door of the gunship. so that shooting could be done simultaneously from both sides of the gunship. This brought in the fourth crew member, a trained door gunner specialist. They would be strapped to the seats with their guns ready to fire. They were the eyes and ears of the crew. Trained to scrutinize the ground from any height and identify enemy activity by their sizes, shapes, colors, and even by their very shadows. The helicopter pilot and co-pilot operated the rocket system from the cockpit. while the observant door gunners would open suppressive fire on mobile ground targets. This combination became an absolute game changer. The use of door gunners soon became a permanent fixture in the US military, especially in the Navy. Where sailors must be on a constant lookout, not only for enemy vessels and trespassing aircraft, but surprisingly, for vicious drones of all types and sizes. Today, these unmanned aerial systems pose a real danger, necessitating not only accurate surface-to-air weapons, but also trained door gunners to take them down and neutralize any danger they may represent. Some drones are programmed to carry weapons as deadly as those ferried by fighter jets. Modern drones can drop laser-guided bombs, release multiple missiles, or even crash and explode on their targets. These are real dangers that call for real actions. Them right here. Oh, you got him. Cool. Actions like the annual live fire exercise put together by the Department of Defense to track and shoot down target drones. The Live Fly, Live Fire event takes place off the coast of Naval Base Ventura County. Unites service members from all branches of the U.S. military around a single goal.
understanding the technology behind unmanned aerial systems and how to take them out. Nice shot. The technicalities involved in engaging targets from a noisy, moving helicopter are just enormous. That is why all future sharpshooters must be thoroughly trained to fit the role. Door gunners are drilled on special skills, not only for taking out flying objects at sea, but also for identifying, targeting, and neutralizing them, even on another moving naval vessel. One of the most effective training for such elite shooters takes place at the U.S. Marine Corps Scout Sniper School. Since 1967, this school has established one of the finest sniper training programs in the country. Trainees are thoroughly drilled on major components of the profession, like stalking, observation, and marksmanship. Occasionally, this training is extended to visiting foreign military contingents. In January 2015, for instance, soldiers from Japan Ground Self-Defense Forces received scout sniper training at Camp Pendleton in California. During an annual bilateral training exercise known as Iron Fist. The excellence of U.S. door gunners is not only a result of the advanced training they receive. But also depends on the quality of the weapons put at their disposal. One such weapon is the powerful GAU-17A, which is the U.S. Navy's designation for the M134 minigun. The gun's Gatling function assists in rapid fire and prevents overheating. Powered by an electric motor, the six-barreled monster can cough up 6,000 rounds in just one minute. That will be an astounding 100 bullets toward a target every second. This makes the gun suitable for use on helicopter gunships and other aircraft as a fire suppression weapon. Loading the Gatling gun in a helicopter gunship is another story altogether. The heavy boxes of 7.62 millimeter ammunition are transported to the helicopter before departure for a gunnery exercise. Airmen must correctly insert each row into the ammunition bin, which acts as a reservoir for the automatic feed system of the gun. Despite the accuracy of these weapons, the door gunner taking on ground targets from any height must overcome several difficulties. The door gunner must be able to efficiently manage real-time obstacles, like the shocks and vibrations of the helicopter, the powerful downwash produced by the spinning rotors, and the surrounding wind velocity. A 
America's air-to-ground combat capabilities definitely reach higher altitudes than these helicopters and the aerial snipers in their doorways. When the situation calls for heavier and more definite targets, the Air Force sends in the likes of the AC-130 gunship. At almost 100 feet long, this massively armed ground attack variant of the C-130 cargo plane was adopted in 1968. by the U.S. Air Force as a replacement for the aging Douglas AC-47 spooky gunship. Despite its impressive size, speed, and altitude, this monster plane could descend as low as just 1,200 yards from the ground. when engaging a ground target. AC-130s came with an impressive array of weapons. The AC-130H variant, for instance, had two M61 Vulcan cannons that could fire 3,000 rounds per minute. One L-60 Beaufort's cannon with a capacity of 256 shots per minute. And one M-102 howitzer with a firing capacity of 100 rounds per minute. These were all backed up by a battery of electronic countermeasures. Loading the AC-130 weapons system for a gunnery exercise or air support mission was not a one-man show. Airmen carry the hefty 105-millimeter rounds into the aircraft and slip them into vertical ammunition racks. the plane has no shortage of hands for the job. Its 13-man crew includes a loadmaster and at least four aerial gunners ready for the job. Once airborne, the entire targeting and weapons firing operation is placed in the hands of a combat systems officer. From his control station at the back of the aircraft, he dispenses information on which weapon to use depending on the target in question. A total of 47 C-130s were converted to gunships, which served in the U.S. Air Force for over half a century. The 8th of July, 2019, was certainly a sad day for many who witnessed this iconic gunship returning from its final combat deployment. The last of its class will retire 11 months later. Its mission was over. The AC-130 gunship had remained so American that it was never sold to any other nation. No matter the efficiency of its state-of-the-art successors, memories of the heroic outings of AC-130 gunships will linger on. And just like the door gunners in Vietnam, or today's expert snipers taking crazy drones out of the air,
the U.S. military's capabilities will always reflect the excellence portrayed by its battle machines and the men who handle them. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.